So now I want to talk about the second job that I would want added to Final Fantasy XIV. So for those who have come from my Holy Paladin video, you've already seen what I want as my first class that I really hope for for 6.0, and now I want to talk about the second one. And just for those who didn't come from that, the context is, you know what, I suck at guessing things. I certainly do not have a crystal ball. <laughs> Um, I, I, I don't even have a leg to stand on, my goodness. But what I am going to say is that these are what I want and that I have insight into what I want and the playstyles that I find really fun and things that I'd like to see added into Final Fantasy XIV that I really think could really add a lot to the game that I think would be widely enjoyed. So now my second class I want, Beastmaster. Which is to literally nobody's surprise given how I've raved and like been so excited about it as soon as I entered the boat in Southern Front and how cool I, I, I just loved it. it. It's like it would be the thing for me. I'd love it. Why I want this is that I want a genuine pet class. Summoner is something that I love. If I'm being super honest with everyone, how else could you do a super in-depth one hour guide on a class? I love the Summoner. But it is not so much a pet class. A lot of the kit revolves around damage over time effects as well as big bursts through expending your Aether Flow stacks. Though the rework did give a massive step forward in that direction, I think the Edgy Assault abilities and Enkindle went a huge way to making it feel more like a pet class. But I think that we can go way further than this. Another thing is that the Edgy can be customized in a way like, you can choose Garuda for AoE, Titan if you want a shield, but you don't really use Titan that much, or Everett for single target. But we can go way further than that. Um, we've also stumbled across a problem in the past, which used to be a feature but was now taken away, that while Titan used to be a tanking pet, and pets used to be able to take aggro and take damage, such as... Um, Rest in peace, my ability to have Selene or Eos on Scholar tank for me when the tank isn't holding aggro, so Selene or Eos would make all the mobs really mad and draw aggro, and Selene or Eos would get whacked. Um, that's not a thing anymore. I actually kind of liked it. It was a feature, but um, instead, now I'm having him sit on me, myself, as the poor unfortunate healer rather than Selene or Eos. But I digress. Seeing the Bojan's southern front and the focus and emphasis on these different types of beasts perked up my curiosity through the roof. We have seen necromancer behemoths that revive the dead and call down meteors. We've seen ghost beasts that summon spirits that one critical engagement with the hand things, if you know what I mean. But we have seen massive bird chimera beasts with the Dawan at the end of the cast and lacquer's Latore when we're fighting Leon at the end of that. Uh, we've seen beast masters on the field of Bojan's southern front tending to their pets, like Pokemon almost. And let's not talk about the red chocobo and the meteors. Nightmare fuel. But being super honest and upfront, I draw a ton of inspiration from World of Warcraft on this point too. Beastmaster Hunter is extremely rewarding to play for me as... If you go like onto a website like Petopia, then you can come across a tremendously diverse set of pet families that can be tamed and perform very different functions. They all are going to be a pet, they're all going to contribute melee DPS, they're all going to interact with your skills in similar ways, but they do bring certain perks. Although recently homogenized a great deal in recent years, the pets, however, as homogenized as people say they are, still offer a massively diverse array of perks for choosing certain ones, such as the Akiri pet moves 30% faster and applies a slow to a target. This is huge for kiting in PvE or PvP because you also can't get it off you, so it's super annoying. The Cleft Hoof is extremely tanky and able to take a massive hit by default this is the solo tanking pet it is so good or the spirit beast that can cleanse debuffs as well as offer decent heal like you can target it this heal onto like other party members like this is a very powerful party utility pet uh and really help if like someone's at low hp just spot heal although it will never replace a healer or take rodents that can apply what is called a mortal wounds debuff that reduces the amount of healing a target can do to itself and from there, the list goes on and on, but I'm just going to leave it at those examples for now. This leads to the pet of choice being something very important to decide on the fly. What will you or will you not take? What sort of engagement are you going into? What sort of goals do you or your party have? Such as, do you need to off-spot heal? Spirit Ge Beast gives you an option. 
Although, obviously, unable to replace a healer without question. Like, you're not going to be able to replace a healer with a spirit beast, like, ever. Like, don't, don't, you can try, <laughs> you're going to probably struggle a lot. Or, how about, like, the Chimera Pat actually uses, like, an AoE field on the ground? Uh, like, there are so many different options. Like, that would be really good in, like, a big dungeon pull in theory. Like, having a pet with an AoE in theory would be really, really good. Um, but, how to say it? Further from this, the different pets also give the hunter a unique perk, such as cunning-type pets will improve the hunter's movement speed and give them a special ability to remove and prevent movement-impairing effects. And so, very similar to kind of like the Wanderer's Pan from the Bard, where you can like cleanse a debuff, but this one's specifically like movement-impairing effects. And self, which is really- no, you can target others with it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Sorry, totally random there. But Ferocity Pets, moving on, <laughs> will give the hunter lifesteal to heal themselves for each attack done to the target for a small percentage of their damage dealt, as well as a potent party damage buff. And the Tenacity Pet offers the hunter more personal HP with the power of defensive cooldown for themselves to use when they need. And in Final Fantasy XIV's DPS Heavy Meta, we obviously would pick the Ferocity Pet for the DPS cooldown because we are, are truly, as a community, much more attuned to DPS buffs and the stacking effects of the buffs. Regardless though, that would be needing some balancing out, but this is simply an example. Balancing and tuning would obviously just come later. But further from that, even in-game, the entire Hunter's primary toolkit involves buffing their pet in various ways. They're all, like, everything funnels into interacting with the pet. Whereas with the Summoner, it's very disjoint. Like, you have, like, your Eggy Assaults that you apply off of your global cooldown, or in King off of the global cooldown, but your global cooldowns are not inherently with your pet for, like, the vast majority of it. So, how to say it? Um, basically... The Hunter in World of Warcraft has their primary toolkit revolving around their pet, but you also have things like various talent choices to improve their pet's effectiveness, to change the pet's actions, such as you can take a talent that makes it so that when you cast Barb Shot, your pet is going to do an area of effect around the pet when used to enhance the pet's damage abilities. Or you can take a talent that's specifically going to boost, like, by 30%, I think, off the top of my head, how much damage the pet's abilities are going to do. It's going to be really big. Or other talents that are going to basically increase the bonuses that you get from the pet, like I was talking about the cunning versus tenacity versus ferocity pet bonuses you can get talent to boost that up so let's look at even the rotation like barb shot is a primary damage over time effect that the hunter applies to boost the attack speed of the pet and that's in their kit cobra shot their primary spamming ability feeds into the cooldown of their kill command ability that where the kill command ability makes the pet do a special attack to the target and the Beastmaster also uses Bestial Wrath to boost the pet's effectiveness and has interplay with Barbed Shot as well to lower its cooldown. It is very pet-centric from start to finish and feels incredibly good to play. Now, I would honestly be silly if I didn't mention the fact that yes, Beastmaster's at least the most iconic one that we have seen in Final Fantasy XIV is Lion the Beast King. He uses an axe and a shield, or a hatchet and a shield, whatever. But what this immediately makes my mind go to is if we got a Beastmaster in Final Fantasy XIV, it would be probably more akin in a large part to a World of Warcraft survival hunter where it uses a beast and it is in melee range. But I strongly believe that it would also differentiate it beyond question as a melee pet class from the summoner and make it very unique to the game. Survival hunter in World of Warcraft is like a melee hunter with like a pet and it is like in my mind survival hunter is very much like Geralt from the Witcher games where it uses a combination of traps concoctions and explosions to deal damage through its kit which is super cool but then you also have a pet a pet a pet tacked in there too which is adding a whole lot of flavor to the survival hunter so in my personal ideal fantasy world, something like this would be what we would get from the Beastmaster Hunter. A survival hunter in melee range that goes ham with customizable pets that can be tailored to the situation with an in-depth rotation that impacts the pet. Where you are truly one with the beast. Be one with the pet. You are the pet. Be the pet. Insert Zen meditation tranquility quotes here. When will I show my reflection who I am insane? Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm stopping. But 
anyhow, that's going to be the conclusion to this, like, two-part video series that I'm trying to squeak out at the, as fast as I possibly can. Arr! But, yeah, for me, I would love a Holy Paladin spin, and I would love a Survival Hunter Beastmaster Fusion spin in Final Fantasy XIV with the Final Fantasy XIV polish and finesse. That is my, like, dream scenario. That's not to say that I don't want things like the Necromancer, because, oh, you would be so wrong if you thought I didn't want that. But for me, these are the two niches in my mind that I'm like, these would be so cool to see in 14, and they would be really unique and just things that we don't have anything like. Anyhow, if you can forgive me for my heresy, I would super appreciate if you slapped a Beastmaster Holy Paladin hybrid onto that like button and get daddy that subscribe button. Anyhow, I'm gonna try and upload this so quick. It's almost the announcement showcase, my god. I just have had no time lately. <laughs> Take care and happy showcase. Let's see how wrong I am with these. I'm gonna, both of these are gonna be a miss, you know. I'm calling it already. Both of these guesses are wrong. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> see you.